Hello and welcome to the 2017 edition of Journey to the Throne. On this program, we get to know the seven beauties who are vying for Miss Dominica 2017. Today I have with me contestant number one, Miss Carla Henry. Carla, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Okay, great, great. So you're contestant number one. I am. How does that feel? It feels amazing. Um, I am very happy I got contestant number one. I was actually praying and hoping and I ended up being the last person to choose my number and it just happened to be number one. I've been contestant number one for every pageant I've ever done. Is that so? That's so. so that's like my lucky, <laughs> that's <child>? like my <laughs> lucky number. <laughs> yes. Alright, because I know a lot of people think that contestant number one is number is uh, normally under a lot of pressure no i just feel like i have to you know set the pace and uh, that's something I, i'm fine with i'm comfortable with that so okay. so you're from the community of maho i am now maho is usually described as the village that never sleeps tell me about maho tell me why you think maho has this name and tell me about you know growing up in maho Growing up in Maho as compared to no, I think they sleep a little bit more now <laughs> because before I think you could pass and around the village at any time of the morning, the night, and there would people, be people outside, especially around the lab. That's like the famous icon area in Maho. So I think they sleep a bit more now. And I think that's a plus mm -hmm. because uh, we find so much negativity happening these days and I, I, I don't want to select my, my village as not being a part of all of that happening in the country in general. And um, I just think that it's, it's a plus for them. We still know how to have life. We still know how to party. We know how to have a good time, but it's limited now. It's under control. Okay. Yes. And a little bit more about you. You know, you're up bringing your, your family background and so on? I grew up with my parents um, in Picati. That's, that's the first area in Maho. Like as soon as you enter Maho from Roseau, that's the first little sub-village in Maho. It's called Picati. And I grew up with my siblings. I had two brothers, two sisters, and then I had a baby sister who passed away, unfortunately. I'm sorry. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we grew up as such a close-knit family, and uh, I eventually moved to Belfast when I was about five or, two or seven years old with my mother because my parents had then separated. So we moved to Belfast, so my father was in Picati, so I used to be back and forth now and then. Mm -hmm. And so basically I'm a product of the entire village because I scanned the entire village. And eventually my parents got back together and got oh. married and oh, then wow. I moved back to Picati. So um, I'm happy for that. I love my little quiet area. It's a quiet part of Mahu. And, um, I'm a person who I enjoy solitude. I, I don't, I, liveliness isn't always, you know, a plus for me. I enjoy being quiet in quiet spaces, my own space, and so on. So, growing up with Mao was awesome. I always had my cousins. I had a lot of cousins, a lot of friends. We used to play cricket on the road. We used to go to the river every Saturday morning to night and pick mangoes, guavas. It was, it was awesome. My childhood was amazing. Wow, yes. I can tell just from all the passion yes. with which you speak, I can tell it was amazing and exciting. So Carla, you've participated in pageants before. Miss Dominica is not the first pageant you're going to participate in. Uh, tell me a little bit about what drives you to want to participate in these pageants. And uh, we'll also talk about how different these pageants you know, were from what you're preparing for right now. Okay. Uh, growing up, um, at about the age of maybe about 10, 11. I used to be a very active young person. I used to participate in everything you could think of because I, I was very keen on volunteerism mm -hmm. from a very young age. And because of that, because I, I, I portrayed myself as a confident person, a person comfortable in my skin, somebody who's not afraid to take on challenges and do different things, I was bullied a lot. I was crushed because of my confidence. I was, you know, told that I wasn't pretty, that I was ugly, that I was slim, too skinny, and that my forehead was too big oh, wow. to do the things that I was doing. And that I ended up being in such a, a, a position where I was not comfortable with myself anymore. And I, I, I pulled back on so much 
of the activities I used to partake in and so much of the things I used to do. And it took me some time to actually grow from those situations because uh, let me tell you, when somebody t tell you they're damaging you, they, they're at you and they're doing it and sometimes you just, you know, you fall short to it and you just, it, it consumes you. I totally understand Yes, this. and it took me a few years to realize that I was not a about to let anybody's definition of my life or negative perception of my life define me and from then on when I came to that realization I just started to become so assured and, and feel so beautiful and just started to participate in everything I could think of because I was like you know I'm, I'm bigger than that I know I am very aware of my capabilities I'm not going to allow it to be buried by anybody Wow, um, that was it that for me. is amazing. Yes. I think that's amazing, and I can see you tearing up, <laughs> and I'm tearing up a bit as well. You know, Thank that you. is really amazing because you know some people when they find themselves in in those positions, they're not that strong on their own. Right. You know, to bounce back. Right. You know, so it's really good that you were able to notice those things about yourself mm -hmm. and make the decision to come back and to act on it. Oh, yes. I salute you, Thank young you so lady. Much. That's wonderful. Thank you. So tell me now how those pageants that you were participating in how do they differ from this this one pageant because everybody says miss dominica as the big pageant you know how, how different is it initially i thought that I, I i didn't really put all the other pageants i did because they were smaller pageants community pageants are you know they're easy breezy pageants right. but i sort of put miss dominica in the same bracket with miss Majamba, which mm -hmm. is what I, I won in 2015 okay and i figured you know i i won jamboree so i'm sure miss dominica is going to be a breeze it's going to be easy i, I i'll be fine boy was i wrong <laughs> <laughs> or sadly mistaken <laughs> Because I think Miss Dominica, it takes so much dedication. Like I always tell everybody, Miss Dominica feels like you have a second job. You're a single mother with 10 children and you still go to school. That's, that's how I feel. Wow. <laughs> it's that's heavy. how I always explain it. It's it is heavy. extremely heavy. It's heavily weighted. But I, I'm enjoying it so much. I am enjoying the different things that we get to do, the different people that we get to meet the mentors, the different facilitators of different activities, events, retreats. It's a lot. And because I've always been an active person, being on my feet all the time, it's, it's not an issue for me because mm -hmm. I, I don't think I can be stagnant. So this is actually helping my drive towards doing things. But it is, it is, it takes so much. You have to be mentally, that's the first thing, you have to be mentally prepared if you're going to contest Miss Dominica, because it does take a lot from you. You have to also deal with um, criticism, and we know that we're living in a time where social media yes. is at a peak uh, that it's yeah. never been before. I'm grateful I didn't have to deal with oh my God. that. <laughs> <laughs> so that is something you, you have to be strong. You have to have what we call the dashing leaf effect these days. You yes. have to just make certain things slide off and not allow it to consume you, not allow it to affect you so much. So. Right, that's right. pretty much it. Right, well, I, I, I like your, 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 how you look at things, you know, you have a positive outlook and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But that brings me now to my next question. Why go through all this? Why do you want to be Miss Dominica, Carla? I want to be Miss Dominica for two main reasons. Firstly, I want to continue being an active citizen. I want to be an advocate for the things I love and I'm passionate about. I want to be able to share my story to other people and let them learn and grow from it. And I just want to represent because I, I, I don't know, but I am such a patriot. I love my country and I want to do everything in my power to just go out there and let everybody love my country in this exact way I love my country. So I, that is one of the main reasons. And secondly, the inclusion of a scholarship has made it so much more attractive yes. <laughs> for me. Yes. Because I, I, haven't, I didn't grow up with so very fortunate. Um, my parents, you know, they, they could only afford a little and I, I'm very appreciative of that. But I felt that, you know, if I can do something to, to, to reduce that strain on them thinking how they're going to send their daughter who always been excelling to university how they but I, I felt like if if I could do that for myself then that's a plus and that's an opportunity where you can 
do something worthwhile for yourself, something that will have a lasting impact. And I feel that I had the potential to do it. And if that opportunity presents itself, then why not? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. That, that's really good. So you have a platform. Yes. Right? I, uh, you, I think you care about the vulnerable. That's right. You know, look into the camera and tell Dominicans what your platform is and why you selected that platform. Mm -hmm. My platform is protecting the vulnerable in our society. When I first wanted to develop a platform, it was very difficult for me to pinpoint one area I was passionate about because through my involvement with youth work all my life, I've been involved in so many different aspects where children and vulnerable people are concerned and it was difficult for me to just choose one. So with the help of my auntie, Dr. Valda Henry, she helped me piece that platform together and come up with protecting the vulnerable. Although it seems like such a broad topic, I've decided to narrow it down to two main segments. And that is firstly the inherently vulnerable. These are people who become vulnerable because of their inherent situation. That includes the mentally and physically challenged, the elderly, children. And the second group is circumstance-induced vulnerable. These are people who become vulnerable based on the circumstances they encounter through life. These are the, those people with low self-esteem, the marginalized, the abused, the less fortunate. And these are the two groups that I want to target. Although they, they comprise of many subgroups, I want to target them specifically. Firstly, specifically, sorry. Firstly, for the first group, I want to protect, and I say protect, I'm not superwoman, but I want to protect these groups by allowing the public and allowing everybody in, in, in general to be sensitized and educated on their position as vulnerable people to foster uh, their right to a life free of discrimination for these people. And secondly, to the circumstance-induced vulnerable group, I want to share my story to these people to help them rise above their circumstances and empower them to be so much better than they are and not see themselves as, you know, they, there's no more hope for them because of their situation. So that is exactly what I want to do with this platform and I am so proud, I am so happy that I've chosen this platform this year for this pageant and I will continue with my platform even after the Miss Dominica pageant whether I win or not. Excellent. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, so we're kind of winding down our time here. You know, it's going so quickly. I know. <laughs> uh, but I want you to tell us also a little bit about your sponsors. You're sponsored by Signman and... The Henry Group of Companies. Yes. Yes, the Henry Group of Companies. It's actually different companies of my, my relatives, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins. It's eight companies in total. So there's VF Inc, which is the main sponsor. That is my Auntie Valders. I don't know if everybody knows Auntie Valder Henry. That's her company. And there's the banana tree. That's my Auntie Athenia. I also used to be an employee of the banana tree when I had just left college. There's Whitco Inc. There's Generous Funeral Services, Brighter Days, EBH Services, and there's Robinson and Associates and Henry and Associate, which is my father's little construction company. So they all came together and decided to sponsor me for the Miss Dominica pageant because they felt that it's, it's sometimes so difficult for a contestant to gain sponsorship throughout this journey that they wasn't allowed to, um, they wasn't about to allow their niece to go through that struggle when they had the means of providing that sort of support for her. Mm -hmm. And secondly, my my other sponsor, the Signman Limited, who he's also my employer. Okay. So it was almost automatic yes. that he sponsored me for that's, the pageant. That, that's wonderful. Yes. Okay, so the pageant is on the 24th of February. Yes. You know, I just wanted to give you a little opportunity to invite Dominicans, you know, to the pageant. Okay. On the 24th of February 2017, that's in about three, two weeks, I want to urge you all to come down to the Eddie Andre Carnival City that is in Portersville and witness a show I think you've never seen before because from my own perspective and from what I've heard other people say, this bunch is like the cream of the crop. It's absolute talent.
talent, poise, intelligence. That's the key thing. Intelligent young women contesting this pageant this year. So I promise you that you will not. It will not be a waste of time. You will not be wasting your money. I think this is something you are not going to regret. And I think this pageant is going to go down in history. So you should be there on February 24th at 8 p.m. Make it a date. I await your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> it was wonderful having was awesome. you Thank on you this so program. Much. I think I wish you all the best. Thank you. And uh, you seem to have a really positive outlook. So, you know, I really hope that it works out for you. Thank you so much. And our it. viewers, you know, we just want to thank you for viewing this episode with Miss Carla Henry of Journey to the Throne. See you with our next contestant.